So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at how we can calculate the volume of a solid that would be generated if you were to revolve this region about these four axes. So about the x-axis, about the line y equals 2, about the y-axis, and about the line x equals negative 1. And for that we're going to use a disk washer method which um, basically involves using the large radius and a small radius, so like the outer edge and inner edge, um, in terms of x or in terms of y, depending on if you're going to rotate horizontally or vertically. And I'm really just going to focus on setting up the integral and not spend too much time on the actual, you know, calculation of the, you know, of the antiderivative and all that. So uh, let's look at the first case. So we're going to rotate this region. It's bounded by the line y equals the square root of x and the line y equals 2. So we're going to look first at how we would set up the, the volume if we were to rotate about the x-axis. So we're going to rotate like around this line here. Let me just draw another sketch here. So, For the x-axis They're going to rotate, you know, about this. So we're going to have something like that would be the line x equals four. Now, um, so so you know, imagine you would rotate this about this line, it would essentially be a cone, or not cone, it would be a cylinder with, you know, like a, like a semi, like, circle sort of thing, like a hole inside of it, like, con like a concave hole or moved. So, um, for this, we're going to integrate with respect to x, so we're going to set our volume as pi times integral. In case you um, need a real refresher, we're going to integrate from 0 to 4. And we're going to have large r of x, that equation squared minus the radius, small radius, squared as well. So, so big, r of x, big, big r of x represents the distance from this axis to this edge here. So it would be like the length of this pink line there. That would be our big R of X. Now, um, this one is relatively simple because it never changes. It's always going to be a constant value. It's always going to be equal to 2 because that line is Y equals 2. So large R of X is equal to 2. Now, a small radius would be from here to here. So like this edge will be the length of that like blue segment. And for that, it's basically just going to be the equation of this line, which is y equals the square root of x. So small, the small radius is simply the square root of x. So little r of x is equal to the square root of x. And so then our volume would be set up as being equal to pi times integral from 0 to 4. Large r of x is 2, so it would just be 2 squared minus little r of x is square root of x squared. Minus dx. So you would just get 4 minus x. So pi times the integral from 0 to 4. 4 minus x dx. And if you were to integrate this, you would get 8 pi.
Okay, now let's look at the second case. So let's look at if we were to evolve this region about the line y equals two. So y, the line y equals two. So let's draw a sketch of what that would look like. X, so y axis. So y equals two. That's going to be the line that we're going to revolve this about. Y equals the square root of X. So we're going to revolve it around that, this region here. So we need to figure out the, the equation from here to here. It would basically be like a sharp cone if you were to rotate this about this line. It would be like a you know, like a curved cone sort of thing. So again, start from the axis of revolution, draw a line out to the out to the edge of the area that you're going to revolve, and this so this pink line would be like our large radius. Now, um, don't confuse this with simply being equal to this equation, like it's not going to be that r of x is equal to the square root of x. Square root of x gives you this length, gives you the length from here to here, this blue line. So what you would actually do to get this pink line is you would have, you would have to take two minus this blue line because the, the length from here to here is always two so two minus this blue line will give you that pink line. So large R of X is actually just gonna be equal to two minus the square root of X. And there's no, there's no, no there's not gonna be a small radius because there's, no, there's not gonna be a hole in this solid. It'll be a you know, solid, solid. So our volume will then be equal to pi times integral going from again from zero to zero to four because they're going with respect to x that would be four two so zero to four large r of x squared so two minus the square root of x squared dx pi times integral multiplying that out you would get four minus two root x minus two root x and four minus four root x plus x dx and if you were to calculate that you would end up with eight pi over three is your answer okay now let's look at the third case we're going to rotate this region about the y-axis. So we're going to integrate now with respect to y. And it's, and let me just draw a sketch here so we can, we don't have to ruin that original drawing. So for the y-axis, That's our line, y equals the square root of x. Y equals two. So rotate this about this line. So rotate it like that. We would get, we would still get like a, like a cone, like a curved cone, but just kind of like upside down. And the volume would be in terms of y. So we're gonna integrate from zero to two. So let's start off as pi times integral from zero to two. And our large radius, so R of Y, again, starting from the axis of revolution would be from here to here. That would be R of Y. And we can simply use this equation, but just make sure we write this in terms of Y. Let's write this function of Y. So we just solve this for x, you would square each side, and now it just become y squared equals x. 
And so then R of Y, it's just Y squared. And there's no inner radius. There's no, there's no, there's not gonna be a hole um, generated by this solid. So you're just gonna have this in your equation. So you would have large R of Y squared squared. And you would end up with y, y to the fourth. Y to the fourth dy. And then if you if you integrate this and calculate, you would end up with 32 over 5 times pi as your volume. Okay, so let's look at the last one. We're now going to rotate the region about the line x equals negative 1. So this one's gonna be a little more tricky. So let's set up a good reasonable sketch so about the line x equals negative one. That's our y-axis. That's our x-axis. So the line x equals negative one will be, let's say over here. You want to rotate it about this line. Now, our equation was for this line that this was that y equals x, or y equals the square root of x. And the other part of it was y equals 2. And, there, and that point was at 4, comma 2. I can actually use a pencil to learn this. So we want to rotate this thing about this line. So it's kind of it's gonna be like a like a cone with like a like a slanted edge, but you're gonna have like a hole in it. It's gonna be a very unique shape. I don't know if there's an actual name for this, but um here's the thing. We're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna be revolving around a vertical axis so we're going to have our volume in terms of y so we're going to have pi times integral from zero to two we need to figure out what large r of y would be and again we go from our axis revolution draw a perpendicular line that would be our large radius so the distance from here to here now the the distance from here to here is given by this equation and let's rewrite this at, as a function of y so let's rewrite this as y squared equals x so in so in terms of y the distance from here to here is y squared so we can't just say r y equals y squared because you also need this distance now this distance is just one, so it's just gonna be one plus y squared. So this distance plus this distance, so one plus y squared will give you this entire distance. That'll be our outer radius. Now we need to subtract this interior cone part, um, just because this is gonna have a hole in it. So that would just be the length from let me use screen actually, the length from here to here. That'll be our small small radius this one's always going to be a constant because it's just going to be a, a cone or i mean cylinder so the small radius is always just one so little r of y is one so we can go ahead and set up our integral so large r of y squared so one plus y squared that whole group squared minus little r of y squared so minus one squared dy and now let's we just gotta make sure we clean this up so we have y, v, our volume will be pi times integral from zero to two squaring that we get one plus two y squared plus y to the fourth so one plus two y squared 
plus y to the fourth minus one times dy. Those ones will cancel, and so your volume will just be pi times the integral from zero to two of two y squared plus y to the fourth. And if, if you integrate this properly, you'd get 176 over 15 times pi. And there you go.